the latest in pop culture and nerd news, an unhealthy obsession with pizza, and more Trek than 12 listeners can handle. Seriously, guys, we could use a few new subscribers, so, you know, tell a friend, please. Keeping up with the Cardassians. I couldn't do it anymore. I know. Hi, everyone. <sighs> Hi. We're back Hi. from jail. This is Nick. This is Rob. This is Joe. And welcome to Keeping Up with the Cardassians. Nice. Is this the extended version? I never remember the song being that long. I know. I know, it feels really long when you're staring blankly at one another, seeing who's going to crack first and speak. There was no blankly in my eyes. It was all love it's and admiration. Me. Welcome to Keeping Up with the Cardassians, your favorite place for pop culture news, TV shows, music, video games, comic books, toys. Offensive jokes. Joe's offensive jokes. And so much more. I like saying and so much more that way. I don't know why. I agree. It's like a game show host. And yeah. so much more. You can have what's behind door number three. So much more is never so much more. It never is. It never it's is. It's always a letdown. If it's it was a- so much more, they'd put it in with a regular gift. You know what make, that makes me think of? Like when people like on The Price is Right, right? When when someone gets their showcase showdown or whatever, and it's super disappointing, so they yeah. pass it on to the next one. I'm like, you can be guaranteed that this one's going to be even worse. And yeah. it usually is in the showcase showdowns. Like, you can win this and so much more. No, I don't want it. I love when the, when they... Uh, pass on it and, it and that's the good gift oh, oh yeah. and, they pass on it and the next thing's like a patio set you're like oh man and a pinball hey. machine hey a pinball machine don't dog that man i'd kill for one. Oh yeah but come on can't, like a pinball machine you don't just randomly get that as a gift like you have to plan for that to figure out where to put it in your home oh yeah eight grand for a cheap one right exactly but so like you don't want to win just a pinball machine to win a pinball machine i i'd, I'd be perfectly content with that yeah. i was watching pluto tv the other day was it deep space nine no uh we uh, we, we love pluto tv on this pluto show. tv yeah. is good which- for the record we have a comment later and i was running off at the mouth and yes we know there is some good joe is offended pluto some TV. pluto tv listeners but anyway there's a price is right channel i offended pluto tv listeners. no, no i did no, rob did oh i'm rob, rob nice to meet you yeah why would you do that rob jeez rob's an idiot well this uh, 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 cheers this growing pains there's star trek what more do you i can't believe you shit on pluto well there's also a price is right channel the bob yes. barker era and uh-huh. the the drew carrier but anyways i was watching a bob barker era one it was from like 1979 and so, and it's like a big screen TV. Get this twenty-seven inch Zenith <laughs> television with, <laughs> with color and you know vivid colors. And it was like, it ended up being like twenty-eight hundred dollars or wow. something like that. It was, it was like absurd. And twenty-eight hundred nineteen seventy-nine dollars. And you know that was twenty-eight hundred pounds as and, well. And you're like, oh where's the god. OLED on this bad boy? Oh my god, it's just crazy to think of what they've done with that. So how'd they wheel that in the studio? I don't know, but I bet you three guys. I bet you that 27th Zenith TV would have been great to watch uh, today's episodes that we're going to review in the second half, uh, which are the great episodes on natural selection and a matter of honor from Star Trek season two. Good segue, right? Sure. Yeah, sure. I didn't even pay attention. So, yeah, it's great. I mean, like I, I seem I'm, I seamlessly went yeah, and then from now Zenith you, television. And now you talk about it, which is. I know. Better. That's what makes it so good. But not yeah. seamless anymore. About. No, it's still seamless. I'm just making it awkward. Because that 79 Zenith would be, what, 10 years old by the time that this episode rolled around? Oh yeah. God, give or yeah. Take. And it, so it would just be nearing the prime of its life with television. No. I, it, back I, then, no TVs, man, they would. The end of the 80s, they had pretty decent TVs by then. That's when they started doing the projection ones, the big cabinet ones, right? The yeah. giant, massive ones that mm-hmm. you had. My uncle, have... my uncle had one. I thought he was king of the world. Oh, my gosh. I was the, like, holy crap, this thing is as, almost as big as I am. And the picture quality was so bad on yes, it. Yes, oh it was. And it's, you had to be, 
like at the perfect angle yeah. to watch it. Otherwise, it was blurry it was and like garbage. faded out. Yeah, you could barely see it. Yeah. So when I started at the the current church I'm working at, like I went into this back room and there was three of those TVs, really, just like sitting there. And I went to the trustees and I'm like, uh, so what are we doing with these? They're like, oh, we're gonna sell them. I'm like, you're not, you're not, you're not selling. Sell these. them when? I said, let, let, they got to go to the dumpster. They're gonna time travel and but sell them in the, the past. Thing. You ever try throwing out, like trying to tear apart an old projection TV? Yeah. Those things are freaking tanks, man. Like, I'm like hitting that thing. I wanted to get out my car and just slam into it, but I was worried that That's an the, the projection TV would do more damage to my car than it my car. It probably would have. It would. Your why would, cars you, made why out would you even consider that? It's yeah. It would be fun. Wouldn't it be fun to ram into a TV? Baseball yeah. bat. I had my That's fir- fun. My first car was a Dodge Omni, like a sky blue Dodge Omni. And in the winter, we would build snowmen with it and and take it like a go kart and, and like do donuts into the snowman. Oh my gosh! It was awesome. Oh my gosh, that'd be so fun! I can't wait to put in my notes using cars as weapons. Uh, that'll be my one of our our uh, show show notes so people know what we talk about. At least today. we're weaponizing them against inanimate objects. Exactly. This is true. Exactly. Ooh, this yeah. is this is personal growth for this podcast. Yes. That is that is going somewhere. Normally we would run over children. Yeah. Five year olds specifically. It's true. Back in the day, David Letterman used to have a segment on TV where he would drop things from the roof. The roof yeah. yeah. And some, that was always fun. Yeah. You know, he'd drop you know fruits and stuff like that, but he would drop TVs. He'd drop the TV. And you know, there was one time where he dropped a TV. I think it was a Xena twenty seven inch television and it shattered the concrete. No, I'm kidding. I made that up. That but, would be, um, I'd be awesome. I was about to Google it. I was about to say, shoot. I I'm sure it's, it was true. Man. They had to do it from a crane. There's no way they could. They got people to oh, do that. God. Years ago, when uh, Hulk. when Leslie and I were That's first married, we were doing our move to our apartment, and we had moved all the furniture in. Well, my, my father had gifted us his 32-inch HD TV. It was a Sony. And by HD, it was 480. It, it was the Trin- Trinitrons, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, those things are beast yeah but they weighed I was oh, that's saying. what i mean yeah. so holy crap that was the last thing we were going to move in and we lived up a half flight and we literally went stair by stair and it was like a big group of us and we're like oh, no can we take a break uh my friend swin had one and holy crap it took like uh, you've met swin yeah he's a beast of a man mm-hmm. and it took me and him and me crying the entire time to get that thing into his apartment at one point uh, I think it was it was so much, man. I have I have one. It's a Sony Trinitron. I think it's a twenty eight or twenty seven, like a CRT, but yeah. it, it has uh, component input, so it ha- it's four eighty i and stuff. It's what usually it's mostly what I run my retro gaming through. My God, it it, it has to it has to go in like one place and then yeah. I can't move it. So just now on the intranets, I found a Sony Vega, Sony Tri- Trinitron Vega. That's what it was. Yes. Yep. Um, oh, I'm familiar. And it had the flat, it had the flat yeah. screen. Yes, like the, the and it rounded. was yeah, exactly. It was one of the first TVs to do that, but it weighed a ton. And someone's selling it for four hundred dollars on eBay. No, they need to give it away. Uh, well, people uh, will buy those for no uh, way. Yeah, they, they the, the Wegas. Yeah, well, no. dep- well, Any, depending on like the ones that were like kind of in between HD TV and the quote unquote HD TVs that Nick is talking about. Yeah, those aren't quite as popular with. The retro gaming community because there it's a digital signal. Yeah. Uh, but the TV, like the TV that I have, and around that era, mm-hmm. those are still very popular in retro gaming communities mm-hmm. because they're. If you don't want to have to like upscale and do all the HD uh, cord stuff, uh, it's the easiest and best way to get the best picture when you're playing your games. Yeah. So they still do hold value. They I don't, hold I don't know if they hold four hundred dollars worth. Yeah. But, well, the, but here, those TVs do still hold more value than you would think. So I have to read this description to you because this is the best part. So it says comes with original TV stand, remote, wireless headphones, and owner's manual. Everything is fully functioning. It says TV is located on the upper floor of a two story home. Nope. Out. Yeah. <laughs> like right there. It says bring your own appropriately sized vehicle plus friends or family members to t- transport everything. Because yeah, I don't appreciate how heavy that thing is. And it says the, the N sixty four shown is not included oh i'm out are you gonna Ooh. screenshot that shot shot that for me to put on the youtube or am i gonna have to yeah. dig and find it <laughs> dicks screenshot it um, i sent i sent you that last time we recorded and that, i did not that's horseshit i sent it to you that was you did so yeah. just for quick guesses how much do you think that tv weighs uh well it's compact so it's gonna be heavy what size is it 32 inch four four eighty i 480 interlaced image folks and the problem is is that there's no place to hold them 
So the thing digs into your hand, so it's heavier than oh my it, it seems heavier than it is. Two fifteen. No, okay, two fifteen is your guess. One seventy five. Closest without going over is Rob at one seventy five. The total weight one hundred seventy six pounds, sir. That's a big boy. One, and, and you're within a dollar, so therefore you get a hundred bucks. Congratulations. Ding, 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 ding. But seriously, there's no place to hold them, so it dig into your hands as well. Oh, yeah. I, I'm traumatized from that thing. <laughs> Sorry, you got you to lift them screen towards your chest. Yeah, but not one guy because that guy's going to die. Cause that, I lifted mine by myself. No, you didn't. I 100% lifted it by myself down my basement stairs. And you died. No, I'm still alive. Oh. Those things are beasts. It's, I mean, I have back pain. I have residual back pain yeah. and AIDS, but... <laughs> it's you got AIDS from the TV. Yeah, believe it or not. You know what happens when I'm deaf. And I'm deaf. Yeah, <laughs> that's not the right sound. What are you doing? What is that? Oh. That's what I was looking for. Oh, I love that sound. Ba -dum -ba -dum. You know what? Oh sound? yeah, yeah. Price is right. Price is Bam, wrong, bitch. I I couldn't do the mono. Oh, I know it's. I couldn't do it. I've been We're, doing it for months. I can't. You want to swap? You want to swap? No. In case you don't know, they're talking about microphones because they're idiots. Actually, it's headphones. Headphones. Microphones is what we speak into. Yeah. Because I'm an idiot. 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 Speaking of idiots, by now you've probably all followed us on Cardassian Spot on Twitter, right? Because you're all idiots just like us. Uh -huh. I've alienated our fans. Yes, you have. I just called them idiots. Sorry. I take it back. It's worse than what I do. Or you follow us on Instagram, the gram, at Cardass keeping underscore up underscore Cardassians. <gasps> Or Facebook. You know, those places. Threads is the same as Instagram. You should go yeah. on Patreon, though, because we're going to release some Patreon stuff today. Though I feel like today it won't be our most uplifting Patreon. That's okay. Sometimes no, we're, 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 all we're about collectively uplifting. getting our butts kicked right now. We're getting our butts kicked, folks. Life is hard. Life is a life's, life is hard. Life is a highway. I, wanna ride I don't want to ride it. Yeah, kind of hoping for that head-on collision on the highway. <laughs> Oof. That is the weirdest song. Life is a highway, and I want to ride it all night long. Do you really want to ride a highway all night long? On a motorcycle, it could be fun. Not in the middle, middle of the bike. night. Not in the middle of the oh, night. Oh, because you're a bitch. No, because I like my life. Mm. 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 What do, is there actual news? Is there actual stuff I, to talk about? I have, no, but I have. we gotta go to. We gotta, gotta, gotta go to. Do we want to do viewer feedback first? Yeah, yeah let's, let's go get for it out it. of the way. Go everybody, everybody hates me. No, well, let's go. To, I just need. To I said one thing. We're gonna we're gonna Everybody go. Takes it out of context. We're gonna go into viewer feedback. I, I think it was. I think it was proper context. Actually, <laughs> we're gonna go into viewer feedback. All right. So viewer feedback. Here we go. We got uh, a couple people. So first of all, uh, a caller. They did not leave their name, but this Pussy. is what they had to say. Hey guys, listened to a well. First of all, typo listed to a recent show. It's listen. Jesus to Christ! Listener. Yeah, listened to a recent show and was quite offended by Rob. He said something about Pluto TV not having shows that are worth the watch. If I roll, recall correctly, in scrolling through of Pluto TV, there are multiple Star Trek channels. Three. So am I supposed to watch Star Trek, or am I not supposed to watch Star Trek? Is it garbage like the rest of Pluto TV? Shame, Rob. I added that last part. Let's Shame, just look at it. So there are a total of, what, six good channels on Pluto TV? No, there's a ton. There's a ton of good channels. I also, mentioned the Price is Right channels right there. Okay, bad, Unsolved Mysteries channel. Bad, mm -hmm. bad argument. Every Rambo movie is always on. There's Real, action Rambo's channel? always on. Yes. Action channel? Yes. Yeah. First Blood, Last Blood, Middle Blood, all of them are on there. If you if you enjoy classic sitcoms, like there's you got everything. Cheers, from, I know. Cheers is great. No, it, it, there's everything from like I Love Lucy to uh, King of Queens. There's King of Queens. Oh. There's put, I Love Lucy. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you put King, you of, put Queens? King of Queens with there's, I Love no. Lucy? I'm talking about era. Like it's all the way to the nineties. Like and I'm 60s talking about to, idiots, and that was a bad comment. Sixties to nineties. Wings is on there. Oh, that's a good call. Frasier. Nah. News radio. Nah. News radio. Okay. Did you just all nah news radio? I did. Did I stutter? All the families on there. Laverne You're and about Shirley. To once I give you a brain <laughs> contusion. Channel fifty back in the day, right? With Laverne and Shirley, yeah. Isla Lucy. Oh yeah. Happy days. Yep. Yep. Happy. They got a Happy Days channel. Guess what? Mondays, Tuesdays. Happy, happy days. days. Oh, the the other thing is it's Thursdays, the right, Fridays. It's the right price point at three. Oh, hundred percent agree. So. I'm I'm serious when I say for that for free. This is absolutely worth the time. 
Dude, they have a Baywatch channel. Yes. Where you can just watch Baywatch all the time. Degrassi, there's a Degrassi channel. They have they have They have three Star Trek channels, which is awesome. Yeah. A Cheers channel. Growing Pains channel. Okay. Hold on. They have a channel dedicated to Deep Space Nine. That's yeah. pretty rad. Not not just rotating it in. I want to know it's dedicated. I want to know more about that. And like, it's what I, I watch it all the time now. Can you get someone from Pluto TV on the show? You think? Can we re- research I can reach that? Out. I can reach out because I would love to figure out more about that. Who did that? The what backstory. The, what I, the algorithm is like? Yeah. What the, like, like why certain channels over others? Why? Right. Like TOS and TNG. Yeah, they rotate the same channel. But I want to know more. I want to know why I led them to DS9. I want to know. I want, I want to know more. And you know, I will, what I, I'll reach out. I'll try to get I a representative from Pluto. Well, you know what I appreciate about Pluto is it rotates the channels too. Sometimes, like it used to have a Johnny Carson channel. I think now that's been rotated off. But now they have like a a late night TV channel. So it's like Conan, Johnny Carson, David Conan. Letterman. They have a Conan, a dedicated Conan channel. They do. Yes. Okay. Two eighty four. I might. Oh, be, a, I might be wrong. Uh, there's a Letterman channel. There was. I don't. There's not right now. Oh, there's man. a late night TV channel on 280. Okay. But I'm wondering. There's you know. So that could be it. They have a Jimmy Fallon oh. channel. Oh, that's great. Why? He's, a, he's okay. Fallon sucks. I mean, you know what's so funny is they never had a Jay Leno channel though. Hey, Leno yeah. sucks. Hey, yeah, I see. It's, uh, because he was like easy comedy, so right? Like he was lowest common kinda. denominator comedy, which is Jimmy Fallon to me. Yeah. Like he's. I don't know. I mean, they have like a Twilight Zone channel. Come mm-hmm. on. They have channels for days, sir. Yeah. But days. What days. Other, what other feedback did we get? Oh, yeah. We got wrapped up in the Pluto talk. What other feelings right. did Rob hurt? Uh, well, actually, this is about you, sir. Oh, uh, fudge. Okay. There's a couple things. Uh, I don't think Joe was being hurtful when he said fat. If you listen back to our last episode, he referred to a character on Star Trek as fat. A fat character because as fat. Because he yes. wasn't casually defining an actor by their weight, but rather mm-hmm. in the context of representation in Star Trek. Correct. So that is a characteristic that mattered in that context. Sure. But oh boy. how can a deaf person be more evolved was pretty effing stupid. That's a As hard a disagree. comic and burgeoning sci-fi fan, surely he understands that having certain senses muted or withheld could plausibly make the other stronger along those without a sense to have deeper, more evolved other senses. It's his failure to understand fake science that is most hurtful at the end yeah. of the day. First of all, the failure to understand fake science is fantastic. Uh, I, know, I that love is that quote. Fantastic. It's failure to understand fake science that's the most hurtful. So, so this comment actually hurt my feelings, but it was... It makes me feel. It made me feel good at first because he said, "As a comic and burgeoning sci-fi fan, Jesus, <laughs> we're never going to hear the end of that." Now, I thought this he is meant great for a narcissist. I know. I thought he meant that's that's hurtful. I, <laughs> I thought he meant like I was a comic, as in like a comedian. I know. Yeah, right? that's I but know. then I thought about it, and he was he meant as a comic fan and burgeoning sci-fi fan. Oh, I took it. Oh, as, oh I took it as like a comic. I took like, it as a comic no. fan. Thank God this comi- guy. See, I was not. So now, now it hurts. Okay, this, this makes this is better. Yeah, it now makes it me feel a lot better about the comment because when he called you a comic, I'm like, does this guy listen to does the this show? Guy know who, first of all, come on, Mike. He doesn't know us uh, well at all. I'm. First, oh, I, I don't take it back oh, anything I said. I'm not done with feedback. Sorry, oh, hold about on. you. Well, do you want to continue responding to no I, I, statement? No, go ahead. Go ahead. First of all, whoever sent that text in, you're greatly Wasn't that deeply. Mike? Me? Was it? Did he yeah. Char- no, it's Charles. Charles, Charles, uh, Charles, yeah, Charles. My Steve, bad. Stephen Hawking via Charles. text? No, no. This is the next one. Uh. Last week, this is from a 269 number. Last week, I was excited to read the transcript of your review about the excellent hearing disabled episode of TNG. This week, mm. I was dismayed to read the transcript. Mike from Virginia. Sent yeah, Mike, via Stephen Hawking text. I voice. got those two mixed up. That's my bad. Sorry, Charles. That's not real. So that's there's no way that that's real. It's sent by a text to voice from Stephen Hawking. No, no, Mike. Mike via Stephen Hawk. See, now people are just making stuff up. D- doesn't matter. You've hurt people. You've hurt people deeply. That person. I bet you. I'll bet you dollars to donuts. That person's not even deaf. <laughs> We didn't hear I'm from one saying, real de- this, You know what? Hold on. I'm just saying no, we're no, supposed this is, to live in, No, no. Hear, oh, hear right, me out. Hear me out first because you're going to offend some people. So let me sure. soften the blow first. Sure. sure. Is this not true? I mean, story checks. I mean, Probably. so odds are. Sci-fi is about being involved. It's about being love and accepting of all. It's not being about being ableist. 
And here you go being ableist. So continue. Go ahead. First of all, I didn't. I just said that they were there. How could they be more evolved than somebody with all of their? Because they have other deeply developed senses to compensate for that. Compensate for the thing that they don't have that everybody Plus, else does. But they have. don't close, need it because they have something else that's evolved. That's that's but to, to that point, closed captioning. Differently abled. <laughs> that's differently fine. abled. That's, that's fine. That's, but this brings me to a larger point of. <laughs> I don't think Mike is actually deaf. I think that was I think that was kind of a, really? a joke. I think it was kind of a joke. <laughs> it was a joke. Okay, so which means I think he was serious. Which means we didn't which means we didn't hear from a single person that was deaf that was actually offended. This is what happens is other people get offended on other people's behalf when that group of people is not actually offended at all. This is why we have the Washington football team and the Cleveland Guardians. <laughs> well, so first of all, Washington football team what Cleveland Guardians are different than the Washington football team because the Washington football team was based off an actual Native American figure. I, th I thought I was going to slip up and say the Cleveland yeah. Indians there. No, uh, Native American figure and actually Native American communities mm -hmm. have voiced support for it. The Cleveland Guardians, theirs was based off a caricature of Native American culture. But the, the name Chief of the, Wahoo? But the name, the, na the name of the team was... Wahoo! The name of the team is because we they were the only team with Native it. American baseball players on it at the time. Yeah, they had one, two, yeah. and then three. How, how, how many so do they, they have name, now? So they named the team to honor them. Okay, but then don't have Chief Wahoo and don't have a logo where it's like like a cheesy... Weren't you just saying that you should so be offended do, for other people? Then why do we have the Braves? Why do we still have the Atlanta Braves? And we do the... Oh, 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 no, that's oh, not supposed to be a lot. I why tried to I tried to get that going today at this did. little tennis he tournament. Did. But why why and do we still have noped. that? Well, I think people would argue we shouldn't have it. I think but people why, do but, argue we shouldn't have it. But why do we still have it? And we don't have the other two. Or why do we still have certain things? Because don't progress have other takes things? time. It no. doesn't happen I, overnight. I don't I don't view this as progress. I view this as regression. I think there's a way to honor the the background, honor the tradition without being so offensive. For instance, you like, can't tell me that the Cleveland Indians, or the Cleveland Guardians, and the Washington Football Teams weren't better all around when they were the Washington Redskins and the Cleveland Indians. I and, argue that Washington dude, Football Team is pretty sweet. In a decade, the name. Or, I'm, yeah, I'm Washington sorry. Football Team. But is now, sweet. I'm like, sorry. They they're now the Commanders. They're, they're Washington Commanders. Their name now is dumb. But Washington Football Team. Was well, sweet. they also missed. They also missed an opportunity to brand with GI Joe. Well, and they're talking about. You are 100 percent right. Cobra the, Commanders. Yeah, the Washington Cobra Commanders. They could have just been the Washington Hasbro. They could have just been the Redskin potatoes and just had a the, giant the potatoes. potatoes. Or, yeah. <laughs> they could have kept the Redskins. It would have been fine. The, I think the problem, okay, so first of all, yeah, sure, our generation is like, oh, this sucks. You know what? Ten years from now, the next generation coming up in football Ooh. will never even know that we're that name. Like, we spend all this time romanticizing the past. Who cares? Just like there used to be the Brooklyn Dodgers, and now they're the L.A. Dodgers. Or the St. Louis Rams, and now they're the L.A. Rams. Ask St. Louis how they feel about that. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's all about money. Follow, follow yeah. that money train yeah. or soon to be the, the, the St. Louis Chiefs because Kansas City, they're th the Heinz family. Why, is, yeah, why is why is Kansas City huh. the Chiefs? Yeah, I mean, again, well. Because you know, they're winning. <laughs> yeah. They're the chief of football, chief of police. Well, Maybe what, they just need a police chief. Oh, wasn't there, isn't be. there a signal in Arrowhead or, or is that in the past too? Oh, get rid of it all. Why don't we just get rid so, of it all? Why don't we sterilize everything? I hey, feel like every week I'm writing Joe gets hey, canceled. Hey, you know that I'm on board. You know yeah. I am. I'm not saying you're, you're wrong. I th there is an overreach here, and you're, we're rubber banding way too far the other way. It's like we're going out of our way to be offended by things that people mm -hmm. aren't necessarily offended by. But for so long, everyone said, suck it up, buttercup. You shouldn't be offended when people were actually offended. So now it's going the opposite, opposite, opposite direction where it's like we're going to go out of our but way the, to the make everyone. The group that should, but the, you, a lot of the times the groups that should be offended are not are not the ones speaking out saying, right. hey, this is bad. Well, I'm not saying it's that entirely, Yeah. but a lot of times it's just not that. So are you saying then the, okay. No, I'm not going to go this route. I was going to get into like a po political thing today. I don't want to do no. that. No, we're not going to do I don't, that. We don't have the energy for that. Uh, no. Yeah, I know. That's what I just said. That's a whole nother. Okay. 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 I don't. Okay. 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 Again, I don't necessarily disagree with you. Uh, it's just that when you come on a Star Trek <laughs> podcast. We're not a Star Trek podcast. 
We did Battles of Galactica. We are a pop culture podcast. Just wondering. reviews things. We should consider doing Babylon 5 to see how it stacks up oh, against Space Oh, don't. Slow down. Yeah. No, we should. We I'd should. rather do Galaxy Quest. Amen. That. That's a I'd rather do that's... Firefly. What was you're no, making that? That's on, not Gal- an insult. That's I'd rather Gal- do what, anything what than the Babylon Five. There was another one. I'm thinking of Galaxy Stargate. Uh, maybe. Uh, I know what you're talking about. I forget. There was like two. Oh, we there's a Stargate SG One channel on yeah. Pluto. There is. Okay. There needs to be a, uh, whatever we did. What uh, Battlestar Galactica. They're, they're on it's, Amazon it's on, Prime again. It's back on Prime. Yeah. Back on Prime. That. Just in time. Back on that Prime, baby. After we're done with the show, right? Of course. Actually, but we watched it better because we watched it by physical media. Yes. And you know where you can get physical media, Joe? You know how I watched it? How? I was donated the DVDs. From where? Fam- uh, family, <laughs> not, not family video. Because family video doesn't exist anymore. Very few video stories exist. In fact, right. I don't know any. Do you know of a video I know story? of one. Video exclusive in Dearborn Heights. Uh, is that on Telegraph? It is on Telegraph. Telegraph Te- and Warren, I believe. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Mm-hmm. And I, I watched every single episode of Battlestar Galactica via DVD from Video Exclusive. You yeah, know what's funny? And four, they, they gave me a Blu-ray to watch of that. Really? And Chris, yeah. 480i? Uh, I, Blu-ray for me. Actually, isn't DVD 1080i? It, it can be, I think. It, no. Or seven, no, 720i. 720i. 720, 720i. 720i. Yeah, 4K or Blu-ray was 1080 1080p. Where can you get Blu-rays at? Video exclusive. Can you get Can you get 4K there? If you If you don't like HDTV, you have like cataracts and your eyes just don't work, and you don't want to spend the money to really up the visual presence, you can get VHS from there too. Yeah, they got everything. They've They're, got everything. Facebook.com. You can get family, candy. Va- Cat Facebook. Candy. Yes. Facebook.com. Video exclusive. They put up posts all the time. If you're in the area, stop by and, and browse the shelves. Browse the extra videos they have in the in the back. Yeah, they, there's a special selection for some of you guys out yep. there. You can always call them at 313-278-4446 as well. Oh, I didn't know that. Ah. Ha- is that yeah. a landline? That is a landline. You like that? What's well, a business? They all have it. I really hope they use a rotary phone to get that, and it's got the cord. Uh, They don't. Dang it. They need to get one. Yeah, that's where I get my candy smokes from. And they need to put it on the wall. Oh, the and candy section be, there is great. It needs yeah. to be mustard, mustard yellow phone that weighs like ten tons, like the the same weight of a twenty seven inch yeah. Cena TV. There's a food truck in front of their place now regularly. Oh, what is it? I don't know. Mm. It's called the back of Rob's truck, and he's just giving Rob's, wieners out. Rob's selling Omaha I, steaks I'm out of his truck. Always giving wieners out no. all the time. You yes. guys need a wiener? Just let me know. Wiener, wiener, chicken dinner. Yeah. So maybe I maybe I heard somebody's feelings and I said that, but <laughs> maybe I did, do? but I don't care. What are you What are you what gonna do? do? What are you gonna do? That's like your catchphrase. What are you gonna do? Yeah. What are you gonna, what do? Are you gonna do? What happens? What are you gonna do? Can I talk about some concerts I went to this week? Yeah, yeah. And it's, gonna, it, it's actually gonna lead me to something I want to talk about that happened at one of the concerts. But so uh, last Saturday I saw Godsmack, and it was a pretty unique show because what they did, did was he stand alone or did he stand with other people? Uh, I sat. So you didn't stand alone? No. You There's a lot of other people standing. You sat, which, stand alone. Well, here's the thing, though. So it was a vibes tour. So what they did is, they yes, they did some electric. They did a lot of acoustic, and they also told stories the entire time. Mm-hmm. It was not a stand-up show, even though they played some electric stuff. Yeah. But everybody stood up. It's like, no, this is kind of a vibe going on here, man. Like They played yeah. some of their hits, but in an acoustic like rearrange. It was, it was freaking cool. Um, and... Uh, I'm gonna actually get so it was a three thousand per person auditorium, so it felt very personal, right? Yeah. So just a very cool show. I'm gonna talk about their opener here in a second because I also want to talk about the Perfect Circle, Pucifer, and Primus. Primus, thank you. Show that it went to. This thing was unique as hell. So you went there, and on the main stage was you know some guitars and whatever, mm-hmm. and then there were two stairs on the side, mm-hmm. and as you led up, there was all th- three drum sets up there. Mm-hmm. Out the gate, a Perfect Circle came out, started playing. And then they played three or four songs and left the stage. And without it, seamlessly, Primus would come out and sing. Mm-hmm. And seamlessly, then then um, Pucifer would come out and sing. And then occasionally, you just see the drummer for Perfect Circle jump on a song with Primus. Or the guitarist come out. And it was just a very organic show. But then at one point, you have Pucifer singing. Or no, it's Primus, maybe. Whoever it was. But then they bring out a ping pong table 
and the other band is playing ping pong with each other. While this guy in a pig mask is riding this little escalator that Maynard had set up, <laughs> up these stairs up and down, while like one of those chairs that when you're old, you, you yeah. ride up and down the stairs. Yep. Or nice. sorry, age challenged. Uh, no, they're old. Yeah, you ride, ride this thing up and down while they're playing ping pong, and these other guys are performing. And then up at the top in the corners, there were couches. So while other bands were performing, the other bands were just kind of chilling out, drinking, and watching See, the show. That's pretty cool that they're just chilling. This was well. a freaking cool show. Very unique. I've never seen anything like it. And it was just, it was wild. It was entertaining. I was hmm. Maynard's 60th birthday, so he was, he was yeah. doing a old joke. It was just very unique. And I wanted to bring it up because it was worth mentioning because I'm a big a Perfect Circle fan. Not so much of the other two bands, but I got to say it was a pretty cool show. It was pretty well executed. Okay. Back to Godsmack for a second. They had a opener. His name was Bastion de Cruz. Batman Cruz. He was a acoustic guitarist. Bastion de Cruz. He was pretty good. Bastion de Cruz, you said? Bastion de Cruz. I found him. So... In the beginning, like he was playing a little bit, and he was like, you know, I'm trying to get a record label. If you guys, uh, the record labels won't sign me because I don't have enough Instagram followers. Yeah, that's true. So we're basing that's our star trouble too. Uh, yeah, that's true. It is true. That's how you get fans now. So that's kind of what I want to talk about. Is that he was pretty good, right? I, I I haven't listened to his like CD or anything like that just yet, but I will. What's that? Um, What's physical the media. They don't have that at Vito exclusive though. No, they don't have CDs. But I haven't pulled it up on Apple or whatever yet. But let's say it's a talented. Let's say it's a super talented guy, right? Mm-hmm. You don't have. Shouldn't they want to get the, help him get the followers if he's a talented person? You'd think so. Yeah. Like we're really making signing artists only if they have the followers already. Do you know, where, do you know what we're living in right now? I just it like I listened to this and and it kind of blew my mind. And he was playing the song Hero, and there's another one uh, I thought you'd call or something like that. And they were really great songs. Mm-hmm. This is him right here. I, I don't have the headphones on, so but I believe you. Uh, I, it just blew my mind, and I, I was like, for lack of a better word, offended. I'm like, this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. That music talent is based now if you have the only sign if you have Instagram followers. Well, they got the they got to make money. Yeah, I get that, but. I don't know. Because they're not selling any. They're not. How, how do you think uh, artists became popular back in the day? They, would get they didn't have Instagram followers. Okay. So. Can you shut up? I'm, just, I'm getting, pretending to get sassy. They would get popular on local radio, right? right? They get plays on local radio. So same idea now. You get popular with local Instagram, then it blows up regionally, then it blows up nationally. There's there's no local Instagram? Yeah, there is. There's still like, like you can go to like local Instagram, like, find things from around your area. All right. Well, this cat's not from the U.S., so he's probably getting well, any local plane. But he's opening for guys next, so at the same time, he's going to get exposure. Yeah, that, uh, this will help, I'm yeah. sure. So I'm just saying, if you guys. if you like acoustic music at all, and, and a guy that can sing, go check out Passion to Cruise. How many stops are on this tour? Uh, Hold on. How, Nick, how many followers does he have on... Oh. Why are you... Don't, what am I counting? One, two, three. We're not well, counting. No, 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 what, do you, no, no. what do you think this is? This two, is not four, a visual. No, 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 no. Hold on. Two, this four, a, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. Who do we appreciate? Four, Zero. Eight, Zero. Thirty, two, four, six, eight, forty-two. This is the worst possible forty-two conversation we're having in the history of conversation. That gave you chance. That gave I you just want to show some support for an artist. How that, many Instagram followers does he have? Five. You, how many? Can you pull it up? I can. I can. We pull have it up. almost three thousand. What was his almost. name? What was his name again? Uh, Bastian de Cruz. Cooper DeGene. Ba- Bastion de Cruz. Da Cruz. Da Cruz. Da, da Cruz. Da. Instagram. Instagram, Graham, Graham. 5,264 followers. He's got more than us. Barely. So, how Singer, many. Songwriter. So, there, you said there's 3,000 people. How many. If we he s- mentions that, do you think he can get 100? I don't think he'll. 100 per show? See. He's from Denmark. Yeah. So, God's Makes core audience is not acoustic audience type of thing right and no but somebody so, but somebody who plays acoustic like that i feel like god the godsmack audience would take to because yes. godsmack does have an acoustic uh branch to their oh, sound sure do the so, other the other side is still one of the best albums i've ever heard so if he can get a hundred if he can get a hundred a show i'd be surprised if it was a hundred a show i would 
Someone just go on there and follow him on Instagram. That's it's nothing. It doesn't yeah. cost you anything. I followed him right after it because yeah. I was like, these these motherfuckers. <laughs> so if he can get a hundred a show, that'll get him up to roughly ten thousand by the end of the tour. Theoretically, yeah. 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 So follow him, Cooper DeGene. On Cooper DeGene. I don't think he needs help. He was <laughs> drafted. He's good. Now is the time. This fall, Lee Majors takes it to the limits. Who are you? Burt Reynolds. You ain't Burt Reynolds. Lee Majors returns to television as Hollywood's craziest crash artist and hottest stuntman. Sometimes I'm Robert Redford. Catch a new spirit of action and adventure. The fall guy. Second round. Uh, so a couple other things. I went to the movies a couple times this week. I went to the movies yesterday. Two weeks. He's telling a story. Can I, give him some? No. Can I finish? I, I mean, want. I want to know. Like, I want it. That's I what your feel, wife says. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel appreciated here. That's also. Uh, so <laughs> Nick went to the movies, uh, and I saw two movies. Uh, the first one I saw was Civil War. The movie with Ooh, the Marvel eight, movie. The eight no, the A twenty four film with Kirsten Dunst. Ah, uh, uh, you lost me. Uh, yep. Nick Offerman. Uh, I like Nick Offerman as yeah. the president. He's only in it like five minutes. Now, oh, you so. lost me. Uh, truly, truly, one of the great films I've seen in my life. Ten out of ten, easily. Ten out of ten. The sound production alone was amazing. So I saw it in Dolby or uh, Dolby Atmos, which is incredible as well. But, I mean, the nice thing about this movie is it's not meant to be polarizing in the sense of, like, well, it's the conservatives versus the republic or the Democrats, <laughs> and it's it's the red versus the blue, and it's MAGA versus... No, it you don't even know why the Civil War started. You don't know anything about I it. I like that approach. You just know it's happening. You know it's not good. There's two states that broke away. Texas and California broke away. They're the Western Alliance. Alaska. Wait, wait. Texas and California were in the same team. Yes, that's, dude. That's the, whole, the whole point of it is Plot to hole. make. Actually, actually, uh, no. I think, and then Florida breaks off on their own. Anyway, so that, that tracks. So the whole point physically is, actually breaks. So there's off a civil the war States. going on, and learn to you know, swim. The whole point is like we, you're so dehumanized by war that you don't realize the toll it's taken on people. So like they're driving around like Americana places, and you see people just hung in the middle of nowhere, and like. You, like you just, hung no no oh. like 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 from the gallows oh okay uh or or like you know you have this famous war photographer who is just desensitized by the death she sees and there's a, a amateur photographer who follows her and she's like you shouldn't be in this field it's too dark you don't want to do this so it's basically the journey of these photographers and their goal is to get from new york to washington dc and no one has interviewed the president in 18 months because, you know, the war is going on. And base, you're led to believe that the United States has become kind of fascist because the president is on his third term. He shoots press on site now and, you know, things aren't good. So it's like their journey to get to the president and the journey, like what press experience and what they see and how that dehumanizes them and how it takes them, you know. How so it's the movie set in the future. Them. Yes, but no. It's like not now, like a, but not futuristic, but in the not so distant future, right? Yeah, like you could see it happening. Like, yeah, it, within within no, our there's lifetime. no technology in there that's like, oh, that's not real. Like, right? So it's it probably within it's our lifetime. Realistic and the battle for Washington. See, I thought it was like a civil war. No. Like, I thought it was like a period movie. No, 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 not like no, a lady no, period. No, it's like set a, like now, like twenty twenty four. I was thinking it. Um, but the sound mix alone is incredible. Kirsten Dunst, I think, should be nominated for this role. What? Really? She's incredible. Oh. She's really good. And uh, like just the cinematography alone is incredible. The battle for Washington, D.C. at the end of the movie, whew, just absolutely incredible. It, it is a must see, I think, with a good sound mix. If you can't see it in the theater, that's fine. But don't do it on a simple television. Do it with a real surround sound system. So I can't watch it on my phone? No, don't watch it. My, what about phone. my AirPods? It's spatial audio. Actually, you probably, I don't know. This sounds like a movie theater movie to me. It truly yeah. is a movie theater movie, and it's because it's not the fat like. It's a very slow burn movie, but it's a movie that's very intense. The whole movie, you're on your edge of your seat. You're not going to tell me this is like a three and a half hour movie, no, though. No, it's under two hours. What? Uh, it's now. I'm it's intrigued. A, uh, let me find out the. Exact I'll go see it next week. Yeah, or a twenty. We'll find a day. We can find a day. And I took Leslie to go one hour forty nine minutes. 
Wow. Under 150? Mm-hmm. Okay. And I mean, it is a breakneck pace. Not what is this, in, 1996? I know. That's not a, a sprint. breakneck pace as in it's like constantly moving, but like in the sense that every moment of film on there is necessary. You can yeah. feel the need for the film that's on there. Um, there's a role by, um, oh, what is his name? Uh, gosh, he's, he's, he's Kirsten Dunn's husband. Uh, Mr. Dunst. Uh, Hour 49, Je- what is this? Blank, Jesse Plemons. Blank check? Jesse Plemons is his name, and he's only in it for 10 minutes tops. He was in Breaking Bad, if you've ever watched Breaking Bad. Oh, Jesse Pinkman. Uh, no, not Jesse Pinkman. Oh. And he is just incredible in that just small moment of it. So I absolutely cannot recommend that movie. Is it still in the theaters? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's really good. I've seen it twice, actually, because Eli and I went and saw it together, and we got home, and Leslie's like, I would I wouldn't went to see it with you. So we went. You're like, Eli, I'm going back out. So the next, you know, like a couple days later, we're like, okay, Leslie, we'll take you to see it too. And Leslie got out of the movie. She's like, that was really good, but I never want to see it again because I feel like that would really happen. And it was like, kind of like, it feels too real. Yeah. But I feel like it's almost, that's why it's worth seeing because it feels too real. And we have so many people in this country who are like, we need a civil war. We need to do that. It's like, do you understand what that means? That person's an idiot. Yeah. They are. And it's like, you think our stupid disagreements over border and over some of these things are worth murdering millions of people over. That person's a freaking moron. Yeah, we can find a way to compromise without mass killing people. 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 So Probably. Uh, um, so that's the movie I saw. This dumbass comment. Sorry. What comment? I'm fixated on that. We need a civil war. People say that. Shut the... F- up. Well, it's yeah. always the idiots who like never served in armed forces themselves and like have glorified like they're the ones who go to the store and buy the the, the vests and everything and are walking around holding their a you know their AR fifteens like acting like they're real machismo. They're not machismo. Interesting machismo. What do you raise a Ramon? <laughs> yes. How did you know? So lucky guess. I saw that one. And that was not an uplifting one. And then I saw another one, and I think Rob, you, you, saw, I think we saw the same movie. Maybe. Correct. Maybe. We mm-hmm. talked about it. Yeah, we did. We talked about it today. Yes. Fall guy. Oh yeah, I've been keeping up with the premieres. I've been having fun with the premiere. Footage. Oh my gosh, I know. Like when uh, Beavis what? and Butthead showed up. At oh, the that, that was funny. Yeah. I didn't see that. I haven't and seen there was a else. fight. There was a fight that broke out at one of them. And did they do that intentionally to make? Yeah, it, it was intentional. Like, the it was stuck guys. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. awesome. Throwing, they were throwing people through the letters, so it ended up being like F A guy because they took the L's, Fog like guy. threw threw people through the L's. It took one off and that was like beating someone with it. It was pretty great. That's amazing. Fall guy to me was a solid eight, eight and a half for a com. It was a really fun comedy action. Movie. I don't, yeah. I don't, I didn't, I not think comedy action, but it was fun. To me, I didn't laugh like out loud a ton. Oh really? I yeah. laughed quite a bit, but I enjoyed the journey. I okay. laughed quite a bit. I thought it was hysterical. Ryan Gosling is adorable. I do, like, I I do like me some Gosling. I know you guys do. Momo is better. He is not. Anyway, yeah, uh, Fall Guy. Dis- I watched it. I needed a distraction yesterday, so I went and saw it. And it was a lot of fun. It was energetic. It, 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 there wasn't really any lulls in it. It was... Lulls. L-U-L-Z. L-O-L-Z. There was lulls, but there wasn't lulls. You know, yeah. Lulls with an S versus lulls said. with a Z. That's what I so said. Lulls with an O, or is it lulls with an L? Or you? A lull is L U L. L U L. All I hear is the same thing. A lull versus lulls. Right. Anyway, it, there was some pretty obvious twist in there. And yeah, there's some the some story stretches, but. It I mean, was it was fun. It's a it movie was, about a stunt man. You're telling yeah. me that plot wasn't airtight? No, it was not airtight. And you know, there's gonna be people that were like, "Well, what about this?" It's like, watch the rest of the movie and figure out. That's not anybody that any listen. Anybody that uses their internet access to go anywhere on the internet and pick apart the plot holes in Fall Guy needs to have their internet access revoked for one year. Well, yeah, see, but uh, Lee Majors and Heather Thomas showed up at the end, which was kind of a nice little oh, nice little tribute to yeah. the original show. More importantly, the truck was in it. Yes. And a redo, like an updated version of the truck was in it. Gorgeous. The, the truck was beautiful. Gorgeous. Was it, a, was it one of those Tesla Cybertrucks? 
No. <laughs> no. Actually, there's one of those that destroyed it. <laughs> I saw one of those in the wild the other day, and it is ugly. And yeah. it kind of makes me want it because it's so ugly. But I don't actually want Jesus it. Jesus Christ. No, like, discount you want a new you... jacket? Yeah, you want a new jacket? They're taking that away, the, the referral the, They're program. revoking your jacket? <laughs> they're revoking my Tesla jacket. No, no, no. <laughs> you don't wear it enough on camera? Here's the worst part about the Fall Guy, though. Reviews of it were great. Word of mouth is great. It's tracking for an under $30 million Are opening. Are you serious? That breaks my heart. Um, and I, so I'm reading this article from JoeBlow.com, and it says, this looks hey. to be, uh, this is bad bad opening for a mega budget action movie and seems to be further evidence that movie stars as we used to know them don't exist anymore, which I kind of agree. Movie we've stars said, as we... Well, we've, we've said that. We've said this several... Yeah. I feel like we're ahead of the... We are way ahead of the curve in our, yeah. in our evaluation of cinema. And of killing celebrities. But so, and they bring up a good part. I think part of it has to do with streaming. And this brings up another uh, another thing is Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is coming out on streaming next week already. Are you serious? Right. So, Holy crap. again, it used to be like, I have to wait another year to see this movie. I might as well go to the theater. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, I wait a couple weeks. So well, yeah, because the movie would be out in a the theater for maybe a couple months, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it would it would fade and then it would go off. Uh, it would be pulled from theaters, and then you'd have to wait another f three, four, five months, maybe even longer, for it to be released on video. Mm -hmm. That's before it hit HBO, before right. it hit mainstream TV. So, and then, and then, so if you're a video person, you got to wait probably at least six to eight months from the from the theatrical release. Yeah. And then, if but if you're an HBO person, you got to wait at least another another six months or so. Here's one of the weirdest parts about this, because in the box office this week was also a re-release of Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, which is like the third re-release they've had of this movie. Yeah, because we are recording this on Star Wars Day. We are. May the Force Ugh. be with you. We don't do that here. Shut up. Um, that made $7 million at the box office. That's pretty impressive, honestly. It, it, I mean, it is. It's Star Wars and the, yeah. the original six, I would think you would, that would do that. Yeah. Is that a hockey reference? No, it's a Star Wars reference. Uh, the original wow. six. Yeah. Who were the original six? Red Wings, Canadians, uh -huh. Chicago, Chicago, Chicago Blackhawks, Boston Toronto? Bruins, Toronto Rangers, no, Toronto Blue Jays, and who else? Toronto, Toronto Blue Jays, Toronto Maple Blue Jays, the Blue Toronto Jays? Maple Leafs. Oh, who is it? Detroit, Chicago. No one cares about hockey. Uh, Kidding. Hold on. I don't want to get yelled at because there are people that care about hockey, just not as much. As oh, I was right. New York was Rangers. Rangers? Okay. Yep. Okay. Montreal, Toronto, Boston, Chicago, Detroit, New York. But Fall Guy, if you can, go see it in the theaters because it's a it's another kind of bombast, bombastic movie that I think gets some benefit out of going to the theater. I'll probably go see it again if I can talk my kids into it. Fall River guy. <laughs> Finally, there's one last note I want to have before. I think we should move on soon. Probably. No, yeah, you think okay. so? Yeah, probably. <laughs> One last review. Uh, on Frosted came out on Netflix, Jerry Seinfeld's movie. I haven't watched it yet. It's I want ripped. Of course. Oh, it looked like ass. It, it looks so bad. The, tra the trailer looked absolutely stupid. I don't know. Sometimes, stupid. sometimes I look at ass. I'm like, that's a nice ass. Yeah, but it didn't no, look like not that good kind. ass. It's okay. not that kind. It's not that kind. It's not like Mars Attacks. Listen, you know, I love like Seinfeld. I love Jerry. I think he's hilarious. I think he's comedically funny, and his timing is he's he's excellent. He's an all-time great comic. That's the pop cart, pop tarts one, right? Yeah, this movie looked like to a total dud. Mm -hmm. It did not look funny at all. Like it looked it like it was stupid. trying to be. Yeah, it was like taking itself seriously, but not all at the same time. It looked like a bad, like straight to Nickelodeon movie. It did, or like yes. straight to Disney Channel movie. Yes, and just because you have a popular, like a ton of great actors, doesn't mean the movie's going to be good at no. all. And you know the budget was huge because of everybody that was in it. And I know that they. Probably didn't get paid a ton because it's a Jerry Seinfeld vehicle. So just working for and with Jerry is probably enough to take a little pay cut. Yeah. But I mean, it it's looked not going to be looked, good for their careers. I mean, it looked like it had high production value. High enough, I guess. But it would. Someone it just, was high enough when they because wrote they that. got high. It looked stupid because they got so high. So stupid. Because they got high. You guys see ba -da 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 the B movie? Ba -ba -ba -ba. I was going to watch some Frosted. Did you see then a big movie? High. Yeah. A terrible. Oh, it was yeah. terrible. No, that, that was like his last movie, wasn't it? For a reason. Let's see. He Jerry, doesn't do movies. He doesn't really do much, right? No one, no one wants him to after the B movie. Jerry Seinfeld. I mean, the streaming rights for Seinfeld is 
a cash cow enough. I'm sure he's doing okay off that. Yeah, he's fine. You're right. Yeah. The last movie he made was B movie. Yeah. It's like the Office cast is probably doing. I mean, good he had comedians and of... cars getting coffee, which I thought was actually very that's a, that's a good show. But that's he's not, not that's not writing anything. No, that's no, just no. It's just that's what he him... does. That's that's what he's good at: sitting down with other comedians and friends, mm -hmm. and just shooting the shit and telling jokes and telling funny stuff. Like that's good stuff. That's quality TV. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like like Jay, okay, let's bring it back to Jay Leno. Do we have to? I never liked him as a late night host, but nope. uh, Jay Leno's Garage. Oh gosh, really good on YouTube and on. Uh, he's naturally a very good interviewer, but he's he's just he. You can tell his passion is cars. He loves cars. He's actually seems like a pretty down to earth dude in this in this uh, context context. And he talks about the cars. He talks to the guys that like if it's not his car, he he talks to whoever brings it in. He takes it for a ride. It's it's just a great show. I would never watch him as a late night host. I thought he's a scumbag, but when it comes to Jay yeah, Leno's garage, like the awesome. two hosts, screwed over. Two yeah, he hosts. screwed over Letterman and and Conan. And Conan, yeah, I'll never forgive him for Conan. Although that run that run when it was going on, oh yeah, it was, was oh, absolute gosh. gold. Conan, yeah, no, the whole all three of them. Oh Con yeah, the uh, the jokes oh, that yeah, they had. Yeah, but like during the war that run, on late night. Yes, yeah, yeah. but during the war, like. Letterman had jokes and Leno had jokes and uh, Conan, Conan had, was relentless. And Conan was relentless. Letterman and Leno have still not made up, right? I don't. I, I don't, don't think so. I don't think they've officially made up. I don't or think, do you think Letterman really. Like, a fa like maybe it's like they're intentionally making it look like they don't. Get no, along. I'm pretty sure Letterman hates Leno. I mean, I get it. He I don't. Was, I, Johnny, I, he, I, was, he was on Conan once, or Conan was on his show, and that was priceless. He yeah. was promised he was like, the Tonight Show. I think it was Leno or uh, O'Brien was on Letterman, and Letterman's like, so. What's going on with you? And they just both laugh for like five minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah, because that's after he got yeah. kicked off. Yeah, exactly. It's like, we have a lot in common or something like that. Pretty good stuff. But, I mean, that sucks. Like, Johnny Carson, like the greatest talk show host of all time, arguably, yeah, um, promises the show to David Letterman, loves David Letterman, says, I am ready to retire because this I want this man to have the show. And then behind scenes, Jay Leno maneuvers things. And well... Just, Oh, come on, guys. Yeah. Right. I, was never I mean, you're going to fight. You're going to fight for what you want. I get that. Like the party. It, it feels like a yeah. snaky thing, but that is kind of Hollywood. And it played out that way. It just stinks. And David Letterman did all right for himself. And David Letterman turned into a little bit of a dirtbag at the end, too, with all of his affairs and everything that he had. Ah, what are you going to do? What you gonna, happens. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Speaking of affairs, should we go to geriatric love? <laughs> I'm the director. Uh, you may stop uh, going. We need to keep it super professional. I agree, absolutely. Should I get in the car? Yes, please. Some really bad guys are trying to kill me. And not in a fun way. You can make it. You can make it. You can make it. I need to hide you. Let's just kiss him. No, come on. Let's get going. Okay, let's, but let's kiss a little first. We're going to start with the episodes, Unnatural Selection. Unnatural Selection, Pulaski gets old. The end. No, I'm kidding. I, that's the best. Stop it there. <laughs> I mean, I really could. Pulaski gets old. No, so basically. Uh, I thought they were going to kill her off. There's a ship Fingers quarantined. Crossed. There's a ship quarantined. The Enterprise goes to investigate. Everyone on the ship is dead. They all just randomly got old and died. Uh, they find that the the... The connection is this lab on this random planet, and they go to this planet, and it turns out they're all infected too, except for this group of genetically engineered children who are like 12 years old but present like they're 25 to 30, um, and and don't speak, but they have mental don't, don't speak capabilities. They're 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 precogs basically, Minority Report style. Um, I know what you're saying. Uh, I'm You're sorry. late on that, man. Sorry. No high Don't five. Your eyes, man. No high five for you. It hurts. you. Can never just let us have something. No, no oh, gotta, so, gonna come in. They were so it. good at Coachella, though. They sucked. You suck. Uh, so, anyways, they get to there, and and Pulaski is being a jerk to Picard, and she's like, I don't understand why Picard is a, such a jerk to me, and it's like, because you're a jerk to him, and she goes to Deanna, uh, Deanna Troy, and she's like, why is he a jerk, and he's like, and she goes, because you're a jerk, you're both jerks, you yeah, have that You're both stubborn as hell. You're both, you know, so Pulaski decides she's going to go down to this planet, uh, or she's going to beam with these kids, because she doesn't think they're 
infectious. Turns out they are. Sure, I'm <laughs> glad Picard was right about that. Yeah, eh? he was right all along. Kids had AIDS all along. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and by the end of the episode, they find a way to cure the STI through transporting STD. them. STI. It's an infection at this point. It's not a disease. It's a disease. Uh, so they cure the STI by transporting her back and, and curing it around. But because of what happened there, that base is isolated. The end. It goes back to my previous point. Why do we need STI? Just STD is fine. It represented Joe, everything. let it go. It represented everything let that it, it was. Let it go. Or I'm going to give you an STI. I thought, I want to I want to start Tarantino style. I thought the solution to this episode. I was going to give you some Star Trek information. Oh. STI. Wait, no. Oh, yeah. I'll take STI. Was that weird? Yeah. Most things you do is weird. Are weird. <laughs> that awkward. That but the, w- the. Thank okay. you. The quote unquote science in this episode was kind of a bummer. Flaky at best. At best. <laughs> what the transport transporter pattern? So why wait, why couldn't so okay. So they're just gonna they're gonna rig the transporter to filter out the disease and like Which filter they said out, they couldn't do it first. Right. And then like filter out her age and they're just like, Yeah, we're just gonna bring the younger version because we got some of your DNA and we're so just So basically gonna, we're gonna kill you and bring back a younger version so is of she, you. I, I I have a couple questions. One is she a clone at She's this point? A clone. Anytime you're transported, you're a clone. And two, couldn't they just do this to eradicate any and every other disease as well, long as not, you have the DNA? Well, well there's brother. not a lot of disease in that century. But yes, in but theory, the, you're right. Ma- well, like if they says like if, all the medical episodes of Star yeah. Trek that we watch, there are so many Star Trek medical episodes. I know. Well, that's a Cardassian transporter. Those things are pieces. Those things yeah, are crap. Those things are crap. Those things are crap. And usually it's like trill symbiote stuff. Yeah, and like, it's a kind of more not, complicated. It's not human sickness. It's not basic philosophy. Car- a Cardassian uh, transport is basically like a seventy-two Malibu. Yeah, yeah that wasn't. So bro, it's like a muffler. This, it's got muffler issues and it smokes. And this was basic biology. You didn't have to deal with uh, a symbiote and all this other stuff. But like, yes, yeah, like, you're yeah, right. You're right, though. Oh, like that, they could. Uh, that's a Pandora's box episode. Yeah, for curing a lot of things, but we're like, oh, Rob, you're not feeling good. Did you get the flu? Let's just. Oh, you did you take a sip of your uh, water earlier? Bring me the cup so I can get your DNA. Oh, you can get it from the sock in my room. Yeah, <laughs> Rob, there's a lot of DNA on this. <laughs> there's what? a lot of socks in here. Rob, why is there multiple DNA in the sock? <laughs> where Where did this come from? There's DNA in the wall, the bed sheets, the. Oh my God. There's DNA? DNA in this picture of Worf. <laughs> it's the ridges. <laughs> it's in the ridges of it. Uh, so, oh gosh. Oh dear. Oh dear. So there's a couple things about this episode that are weird, right? We're just glossing over the genetic engineering portion. Yes. Yeah. That's we the ignore weird, that. That is the, the genetic engineering of, of children. Of children. We're genetically engineering children to be more advanced where they can't talk, but they're all like... Like able to. Sorry if you hear the lawnmower. The lawnmower man's out today. Lawn lawnmower man. Lawnmower I want to watch man. that movie. That is terrible. A terrible movie. So yeah, we're just glossing over the fact that they're genetically creating children to be more advanced. Like, how do you determine what's more advanced? And it's illegal. They can't talk. I mean, I guess that's a start. Well, they can tell kids who can't talk. That's oh, so, so they're more advanced if they can't talk, but they're shut up. I was making can a they joke hear? about telling children not to talk. Well, yeah, that, I mean, that's... That's what I was doing. That's the first thing you should do. Yeah, exactly. Zip your lip. Zip your lip, you little crap. Yeah. Only speak when spoken to. And they say, nay. They're no. going to thought project to you. Yeah. <laughs> and, of course, they go right to Deanna Troy. Those 12-year-old boys go right to Deanna Troy. Well, because they're, they're like, 12. let they're... me see inside your mind, Deanna. Yeah. And by mind, they mean uh, uniform. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And by uniform, they mean they want to be in Deanna's pants. They're very inappropriate. I know. Kids. Boys. Well, they're not kids. To be fair, they're 25 year old men playing kids. So, yeah. There's yeah. that. There's they that. Do. So, it's not it's weird. It's like this or, podcast. It's 25 year old or 15 year old men in 40 year old bodies. Speak we for, are adults. Yeah. Speak for yourself. I'm in peak physical condition, my friend. I didn't roll my ankle once today. I know. Not When's the once. last time you rolled your ankle? About two years ago. But your daughter no, did. No, bo- it's got to be yes. within. You, yeah, my, my, my you rolled your ankle. Japanese exchange student child rolled her ankle today at the tennis Oh, it's match. already running in the family. It I It's like, oh, so nice I heard through that tribute to you. That yeah. was so kind. I know. Yeah, it was pretty nice. So, anyway. So, she's fully assimilated, right? Huh? She's fully assimilated. But no, there's, 
you had to have rolled your ankle in 2023. Nope. Not once. Maybe for the filming of a behind the pod, but that's it. Available on Did, Patreon. Didn't you go on a, like a cruise 20, in twenty the early twenty twenty three and you rolled it or like a trip? What was it? What was the trip? That was that, back when I went to Alaska and I rolled it right before I got on the and, plane. That, that he was, rolled it so good he got COVID from it. That was I know. That was two years ago now. That was twenty twenty two. Wow. wow. Huh. So, so speaking of rolled ankles, uh, she gets old. Pulaski's old and yep. her body hurts. Excellent makeup Older. job. Older. Excellent yeah. makeup job. Um, yeah, did you think that was pretty good makeup? No, it okay. least sucked. It, they're say. still in the uh, Biff. Yeah, they are. They're still in the yeah. uh, Biff looks old. They don't figure it out let, in let, Star Trek. Let's for, just give them jowls. That's yeah. all we need. To, well, they didn't never figure that out. Deep Space Nine, they don't figure it out. They did it for Pike in Strange New Worlds, though. Pike, they did. But like, yeah. when remember the one episode oh, where they Bashir, were Oh, Bashir, it was terrible. Yeah, Bashir's was really bad. So was Jadzia's. They were all bad. No, so... Well, could, it, wasn't there one episode where it wasn't bad? Like, they were all... No, I'm thinking some, I'm thinking the wrong thing. So far, Star Trek has not done a good job with the our characters are not old, but let's make them look old makeup. Well, and there's also part to this whole idea of like if we're really in the future here, haven't they perfected how to like keep your skin from looking old even though you're old? They're not yes. vain. There's no skincare routine. There's nothing the about Enterprise. vain. It's like as your skin gets older, it gets more dry. So if you can keep it look younger, it, you're so vain. You probably but, think this episode's about you, but it's not. Do you know who that song was about? Carly Simon wrote it about. Uh, uh, who was it? Freaking A. I think it was Warren Beatty. Yes, he's yes, a good-looking dude back in the day, though. He was. Yeah, he really was. But I, I imagine him being pretty vain. Vain. Yeah. I, I guarantee you, Warren Beatty pulled tail back in the day. Not like Blasky. Can you go to does. Warren Beatty's "Who's Dated Who"? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lord. I will. I will. Remember, you got to click on the name. When you look up Warren Beatty, you got to click on his name, and it will pull it up. He was born in 1937. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a movie star. He's a age cle- 97 years or 87 years old. Is he still alive? Yeah, he's still alive. Good for him. Wait, hold on. Only okay. movie I ever remember him in is okay. Dick Tracy. Dating history: Annette Bening, Stephanie <sighs> Seymour, Carol Alt, Joyce Heiser, Daryl Hannah. Madonna? Yeah. yeah. Isabella during, that was during, Johnny. I, that was during Dick Tracy. That was during Dick Tracy. Kelly McGillis. Charlotte. Hopefully that, was, hopefully that was back in the Top Gun era. Yeah. 1985. Yep. Mary, oh, yeah. Mary a, Tyler Moore. Interesting. What, what year? Uh, 80, 81. Good pull. Christina Onassis. So in a, Onassis. A, <laughs> Janice Dickinson. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's an A. That's Diane, a, Diane Keaton. Good for him. That is, an, that is an A roster right there. Bianca Jagger. Iman. Ooh. Oh my! This, uh, is better, this is better than I thought. Uh, Jackie Kennedy. He banged an Onassis 19, and a Kennedy. Nineteen seventy-six. He, he batted the cycle. Oh my! Yeah. Oh my gosh! Melanie Griffin. What year? Uh, seventy-four. Carly Simon, seventy-two to seventy-three. Yeah. Goldie Hawn, Joni Mitchell, uh, Barbara Streisand, Jane okay. Fonda, Bridget Bardot. Holy she can find it back in the day. Princess a- Elizabeth of Yugoslavia, Morgan Fairchild, Princess Margaret, Bernadette Peters. Okay, if you if you Linda if you, McCartney, if you put this into context, this is probably one of the greatest rosters of all time. Probably. I I mean, that that is a that is a two years they dated sixty six centuries worth or sorry centuries decades worth of that is an elite roster joan collins oh my gosh this man was a dog diana <laughs> ross oh he, my god <laughs> Keth. oh you know, i don't know that name he Di- needs to diane be, sawyer he needs to be up on the mount rush no mark. that can't be oh that's a rumor that's a is rumor. there a hall of fame joe have you created one yet uh who's dated who hall of fame yeah well i'm, I'm creating it now right now it's warren Beatty. could be a patreon special <laughs> Oh my God! That is. We can invite him on the show. Can I, I s- knew he was a hound, but that is that's way better than I ever anticipated. It's impressive. That is All impressive. Right. So, getting back to Doctor Pulaski, um, she sucks. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of. Yeah, they wanted to kill her here. You know they didn't. You know what's interesting about this episode is it's obvious they're trying to make us like her more because the one doctor is like, "I'm so excited to work with her. She's incredible. She's amazing." Yeah. And and we're like, "Yeah, so what? No one likes her on the ship." Like, no. No one's like, there's no real mystery. Like when they're like, we don't know if we're going to be able to beam her back at, at a regular age. Like, kind of don't care. 
Yeah, I didn't care. Like, but, make her old because it's fine. Because like, yeah. still but she's not. She's not a nice person either. No, like, she she's always not. she always interrupts, which I thought was hilarious when he's like, "Can you just let me finish my sentences?" And then the next she interaction, she interrupted him multiple times. Yeah, and it's like, and I understand you can be like, "Well, you two are a lot alike." Yeah, well, he's the captain. Yeah, he's and your she's superior. Not, like, so you're still a prick. And then when she got AIDS, and Data was like, um. Uh, what was he doing? He was like evaluating her and he's like, how do you feel? And he's, she's like, uh, not he wouldn't up, understand. No, she's like not up to factory standards. And she's like, oh, sorry. Like she's making, she's making Android. Like she's making machine jokes at well, him. all the time. And she doesn't stop. <laughs> she and then, hates and him. then she's like, and then she's like, well, you're going to come on the ship with me. He's like, well, what, you know, you're, you're not going to get the virus. And he's like, you don't know that. Cause she doesn't know that. Yeah, Cause, a, he's cause he, pre- to, he takes in air and he got the one virus that made him bang Tasha Yar in the first season. Yeah. He used that as an excuse. He had no virus. Yeah. He was perfectly healthy, yeah. but like, and she's, and she doesn't, she just doesn't care about him. She doesn't care about anyone but herself. I, I got a, another plot hole and a question. So when she goes to Jordy and Jordy's like, there's basically no way unless you take a tra- unless you take a, um, like a, a ship, unless what is it? What is it called? A uh, shuttlecraft. A shuttlecraft. Yeah. And she's like, "Oh yeah, good idea. I'm gonna do that." There was no at no point did she discuss. It, I thought it was. I was under the impression it was gonna be her and the the subject. Right. And then, and then she she's like, uh, data. "Data, yeah, come on, you're going." And, I was then, like, and then that even felt a little shady because then she's like, "Data, you're coming with me," and he's like, "What?" And it's yeah. almost like the captain didn't approve it and well, they didn't really talk about it. I got the same feeling, but when they mentioned data being on board everybody was cool with it so i'm assuming maybe those done off screen they obviously it's yeah. probably cut lines right um, but uh, i mean clearly he's the one to take because he's the android but what happens if, what happens if like i guess he can just still come back he can take the shuttlecraft back but he could he carry it if is he an android could he be a carrier well yeah it could yeah it could be asymptomatic but i mean even if he can't I know, even, I know, even I know, if I the disease can't like infiltrate his immune system cuz he doesn't really have one could he carry the disease? And then I would think he could. I, mean, I, I would think it's a strong possibility. I don't know. It just And I love how the way they decide to bring her back, by the way, is let's creep around her room and find her hairbrush. Uh, no, let's get her hair around. Around. Of course, who's gonna do that? Riker. Yeah, Riker. Riker. I know where to find the hair. I know. They're like, Riker, we need you to find DNA. He's like, Oh, them there's, there's plenty oh, of not, DNA. Not in that your room. quarters. Oh yeah. crap. Where's Rob's sock? <laughs> I mean, like, there's some weird. I, I just still, I still don't like how we just glossed over the genetic engineering part. I feel like that was the more. Compelling it's a huge story. missed opportunity. Yeah, it's the more compelling story, right? Yeah. Which DS9 obviously focuses on more and does a really good job of it. Um, so I, does Star Trek too. I love how we got some uh, Miles O'Brien in this. Yeah, episode. the both of them. He's. He, I noticed that his name is now in the mm-hmm. in the crawl in the in the the mm-hmm. crawl at the at the mm-hmm. beginning. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we're moving we're moving up mm-hmm. moving on up if only he'd get to be a regular on a show at some point i know it's not gonna happen nope mark my words he's never gonna be a regular on a star trek show mark my words probably not i mean i i see him as a budgeting talent but yeah he's he's just i i can't ever envision him being the most important person in starfleet see history. i i see him coming across hard time in the near future yeah mm. Is he married at this point? No. When You'll, does he? Okay. Never mind. Enjoy the journey. Okay. I'm yeah. just. I'm just curious. A simple no is fine. I, I can. I can gather that. I can gather the information as I need to. Is there really anything else to say about this episode? I don't know. I'm just looking at some of the quotes. So first of all, the uh, the ship was the the USS Lantry was a redress of the Reliant from Star Trek II: The Wrath of Khan. That was obvious. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I'm just looking at some of the quotes. So you got the Picard to the doctor. Doctor, God knows I'm not one to discourage input, but I would appreciate <laughs> if you'd let me finish my sentence once in a while. And the very next time they talk. She interrupts him multiple times. I like how they made her. Uh, they're really digging into the bones comparison because she's afraid of transporters, too. Oh, I know. Right. Yeah. She really avoids using those. And then by the end of the episode, we find out like, oh, she really wanted to be on the Enterprise. She really has been fascinated by you. Oh, so the reason why she's a prick to him is because she's admires him. That doesn't make any sense. Well, aren't don't guys flirt with girls sometimes and be pricks to them when they like them? Yeah. Yeah, In like third grade. Yeah. That's because, uh, or now, Joe Prick. Hey, that's called toxic masculinity where you're mean to a woman just to get her affection. That's not cool. 
Ah, uh, good old emotional manipulation. Ah, what are you going to do? <laughs> what are you, what are you going to do? Speaking of what are you going to do, it's time to move on to some Cleons, don't you think? Yeah. Let's move on to some One or Cleons. both. A matter of honor. There's new crew time. Riker and Wesley go down to meet the new crew, and there's a new Benzai. Oh, look who it is. It's Mordok. False, racist Wesley. Not all of their species look the same. He's Mendon. And Mendon's kind of a jerk. He's a know-it-all. He knows everything. Um, and and for some reason, even though he went through Starfleet protocol training, he decides he's going to operate like this is one of his ships from his species, and they have to constantly remind him, dude, you're on a Federation Starship. I mean, how many times have you seen a safety video at work or something and just kind of just right ignored it? <laughs> yeah, but you're in Starfleet, and it takes a lot to get in Starfleet. We've seen that. So anyways, that's happening. Meanwhile, uh, Riker... Um, gets assigned to a Cleon vessel. He's going to be on this Cleon vessel. And right away, uh, he, he's doing all his homework, and he's excited to be there, and the Cleons are ready for him to be a joke. They're ready to walk all over him. He comes in there. He eats the gah. He, he eats all the foods. He's He Excuse gets me. in a fight with another another person on the ship the to prove officer. himself. Yep. The second officer. They Quack. love him. The Cleon women, they want him. They want him bad. Of course. Things are going well until, of course, the cap, the Cleon captain suspects the Enterprise of, of causing some issue on their ship. So he decides that he's going to go blow up the Enterprise. And Riker's like, you ain't going to do that, bro. So he beams him, this guy, back onto the Enterprise, takes command of the Cleon ship, and says, no, you surrender, Enterprise. And the Enterprise surrenders to the might of William T. Riker and his DNA. And uh, and then after that, uh, they beam the Cleon captain back on the ship who beats the crap out of Riker to reassert his position. And then the Cleons go, you really do know what it's like to be a Cleon. You're welcome back anytime. And then Riker finds a ready room with some of the Cleon ladies. And that's the end of the episode. I made up that last. No, part, it happened. I'm assuming it happened. It was a deleted scene, man. He just yeah. railed them all. Yeah. So the Klingon women are freaks, man. Yeah. Man, they, you know what I, okay, so here's my thing, I will say. This is my controversial opinion. I like the Cleons better in Next Generation and the movies that I did in Deep Space Nine. That's a bad take. The Cleons become a caricature of themselves. They're a little bit too obsessed with glory and honor and drinking and blah, 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 And that's my way of saying yada, yada, yada. Uh, I, I like him better. I like him better, more mysterious. It's like Joker. I don't want to know his backstory to know that he's he's Joker. Kind of the same thing with Cleons. Because the more you see the Cleons, especially in Deep Space Nine, you go, how the heck did you organize to become a powerful empire? Right? Well, we've established in Star Trek Six. there's different classes of Cleons as well. Yeah. And Star Trek Discovery as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Disco. Disco what? Disco these nuts! <laughs> okay. That was aggressive. Yeah. It was. I'm sorry. I do like Klingon episodes, though. I've I found myself in liking DS9? all DS Nine in in DS Nine and uh, Next yeah. Gen so far. Yeah, DS Nine. I think it was only really one I didn't particularly enjoy or or didn't rate high highly. I think one of my favorite ones was the Jedzia Dax one with the Cleons when she uh, went out rogue. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean. Is that the one where she, the where she, she went goes to go and kill? kills people? Yeah. She's the, like Cisco. The, the albino. She's like, like Cisco. I'm yeah. gonna go kill some people, and he's like, hey, you gotta at least go on he's leave like, to do that. I, I understand. <laughs> you can't do that on the. I clock. gotta go take care of some Romulans. You, know you go says? do what you do. You know what yeah. Cisco says? Yeah. What are you gonna do? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. I can live with it. That's that, what, that's, that's what fine. he says. I can live with it. That's what fine. What are you gonna do? Yeah. What are you gonna do? So the scene inside the mess hall on the Klingon ship, is easily the best scene of Next Generation so far. Oh, yeah, him talking with them yeah, and, just like, joking you, around. Yeah. And, like, at first, you're like, how is this going to go? Riker's not doing well, but he immediately asser inserts himself. They find out he has a sense of humor. Well, yeah, as soon as he's like, perhaps if it's not to your liking, I can get one of the females to breastfeed you. Ah, ah. Yeah. And, and Riker was like, bet. Yeah, yeah bet. I'll take yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Vecma, he is not very attractive, but I will have him. Like, okay. Yeah. Did they want, like, what, he, what was it? One or both or whatever. Yeah. 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 
That was a great scene. Yeah, it was great. I thought oh, it was yeah. They are inquisitive. They wonder how you would endure. Endure what? Them. <laughs> One or both. <laughs> I thought that scene was a lot of fun. I thought it was some nice character moments. It really shut, let Riker shine for a minute. Because, yeah, if you think about it, this season... He's taking a backseat. He's season. nowhere to be found. I feel like they've kind of done a little bit of a soft reset of Riker in some sense. Well, he's still though, got the bravado, but... Uh, and in some ways, he wasn't believable as the first officer in the first season. He was a little too loosey goosey, uh, especially with his penis. Um, See, I miss that. I wish. I wish he's got a little that, bit of Warren Beatty in him. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure Warren Beatty has a little bit of him in there. If I look at that, who's dating who? Who knows? <laughs> it's Will Riker on who's dating who? Yeah, I don't know. We're gonna find out. Is there fictional characters on that site? I don't think That'd so. That'd be a trip if there was. Yeah. Star Trek: Who's dated who? Dated who? Who should we look up? Uh, uh, what's the name of uh, Bugs Bunny's girlfriend? Jessica, uh, not Jessica uh, Rabbit. I'm gonna look up Jessica uh, Rabbit though. Anyway, um, Jessica is Rabbit is not on here. Dabs. Adult oh. content warning. Go away. Go away. <laughs> Babs. Babs Bunny. Babs Bunny. Yeah. But um, with Clag and everything, Bugs like I earned his respect after he beat the crap out of him and told a couple jokes. Yeah. That was pretty good, man. I, I really enjoyed that. And even the scene inside 10 Ford where he's eating the Klingon food. I, yeah. other, other than I thought Picard and Pulaski reacting so disgustingly to the food was a little bit much. One or the other. Pulaski makes sense. Yeah, yeah. she does make sense. But Picard would not make sense. In I, I think Picard maybe a little bit, maybe, but not to like everything like they were doing. Mm -hmm. I get you're trying to show the different cultures. That, that's yeah. good, and that's good. But I don't think Picard would be like eh, to everything that you see. No, you would think he would have a little more tact. Yeah. You would think. He might be like, no, nah, you know, the gosh, I'm good on that. Yeah. But uh, that other thing was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love the corn dog. Yeah, let me get that corn dog. Let me get that corn dog, please. Uh, you know, I, I just appreciated the way that they did the Cleons because they felt formative here. They felt like, oh, I could understand how they're powerful. Yeah. I see. I, I, I would disagree because the captain was very overreacting to everything. Yeah, he was, but that's kind of. I think that was kind of the point. Like, this, this is a good crew, but they have one bad egg in them, or and it a, takes Riker to fix it. They had an hour to work with, and they had to really yeah. push, yeah, everything quicker. So yeah. that's what it was in the long run. Well, but it tells you the. I think there's like a couple stories there. Like, there's the importance of a good commanding officer. A good commanding officer will keep you out of trouble when you need to be kept out of trouble, right? Or or get you into it when you need to. And Riker knows how to protect that crew, right? Um. And honestly, even the captain assuming the Enterprise is out to get them, it's like, yeah, because that makes a lot of sense, bro. Yeah, and you're going to... just looking for a fight. But that's like what we see of Cleons. They're always looking for fights. And the Enterprise, if they really wanted to attack you, they would, they murder would destroy you. Because what we... see, the Literally. One, the one thing I kind of appreciate about the Cleon Empire, at least in the movies and in original Next Generation, and you, they kind of allude to a little bit in DS9, is, of course, they're... They're the counter to the Russian influence, the co Communist Party, the USSR. Yeah. But they also follow the idea of the empire is kind of crumbling from the inside, but they still try to project power even though they're falling apart, which would mean their ships are falling apart. So, like, their ships are no match for anything the Federation can throw at them. The only thing they got is the cloaking ability. The like cloaking ability and, and relentlessness. Yeah. Yeah, like those are two good abilities. Life. Cloaking is important. Well, I would agree, great... and, and the ability and desire to want to win, be well, victorious, yeah, is huge. Yeah, the, the never surrender, never give yep. up, got never that, surrender. That Jordan killer instinct. Exactly, man. You gotta mm. have that mindset. Mamba mentality. You can't be soft like LeBron until they go right. to the casino and get their dads killed. Listen, got his dad killed at the golfing range, probably. Probably, maybe I don't. Know. I, honestly, anything. We can Atlantic City, confirm. like. Uh, who knows? Jordan gambled on everything. You did. You did. Uh, Worf's line to Ensign Menden was pretty amazing. You may impress me. That was a great line. I was trying to yeah. impress the captain. And you're thinking Worf's going to walk up to him and be like, bro, come on. But he he he's a good he's a good uh, commanding officer here. He was Worf. annoyed, rightfully so, though. He was annoyed, but he wasn't like a prick to him. He's just like, impress me. Show 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 me what you got. Uh, I think it was a little more aggressive than that. Yeah. Show me the money. Show me the money. Yeah. And I will teach you proper enterprise protocol. I want that Quan. Quan. I know a Quan. Quan, Jerry. Quan. Quan. But what what about the uh cultural differences? 
bigger questions is the USC talk about that at all? Just do you want to expand upon that? I'm tired. So I was, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm just going to give this to you talk. Yeah. Well, you're good at that. I mean, I, I do, I do appreciate, <laughs> I do appreciate that it is something. Uh, Next Gen hasn't really asked a lot of, like we talked about, ask a lot of big questions or give you a lot of things to think deeply on or reflect on in a, in a, like a really deep manner. So showing cultural differences and even, even the, the comment by Wesley in the beginning uh, about, yeah, yeah, about mistaking him for. I thought you all looked alike. Yeah. And it, it, well, he didn't take offense to it though. No, he was used to it. It looked like. As he shouldn't, because it was not meant as like, because let's be honest, they looked very similar. And if you don't see them, if you don't see, well, I think that, that those, I th- I if think you don't it, see that, like that group very often, the last time he saw, it's one thing to make a mistake. It's another thing to double down on it. And he didn't do that. What, right. Like men, men is not like, oh, it's Wendon and Wesley goes, sorry, y'all look alike. Right. Yeah. He's just like, oh my gosh, I'm no, the, so sorry. No, yeah. he said that. Menden was his name, was it? Yeah. He said that. No, sorry, man. We're from the same province. We all look alike. It's our problem. Yeah. Exactly. I was like, dang. Well, it's kind of like, you know, a lot of Scottish people look very similar, right? Red hair, ginger, gingers. Wow. We just lost our Scottish people. No, no, no. It's true. They got red no, hair. Is, and yeah. My wife is Scottish. She's, she used to have red if you're, hair. If you're listening in Scotland, uh, she, First of all, yeah, actually, 734. Uh, yeah. My, my mom's side is from Wales, man. I want the accent. 734-494-0980. Give it us a call. I'm Don't text Scottish. call. Yeah, if you're Irish, call too, because that accent is oh, the best. Oh, please do. Please say hello, computer, to me as well. Hello, computer. That's Scottish. I'm talking about Irish now. I've moved oh, on. You've moved on? I've I moved on. I'm, I'm, I'm still back on the Scottish. British, you guys can call too. I just want to. I want to hear it. Well, oh, oh, oh. That's Australian. You say next then. Don't call. Raise a blind text. Raise a blind. And I'm the I'm the one that's offensive, right? I'm just doing bad accents. It's not offensive when they're really bad because I'm or really is just that that more offensive. Is it more offensive? No, it's more just offensive to me. Like you're embarrassing. It's actually offensive yourself. to us. Yeah, we have to hear. We're it. stuck here. That's a good point. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Forgive me. But I do I do appreciate that they tackled. Uh, cultural differences and I don't know. It's it's DS Nine was way better at, oh, at, yeah. at presenting those topics, and even Battlestar Galactica was better at presenting. Yeah. Even of course it was. I've never heard of that. What is that? <sighs> but I mean, it's it's Best something. Science fiction shows. It's something. Time. It's something Dumb that idiots, next generation face. has the opportunity to do. Punch you in yeah. the eyeball. <coughs> I'm bringing that back by the Excuse next. Why Nick? Just you know, you can because I mean it tracks with your brain injuries from That's true. football. But yes, yeah, so I appreciate them actually trying to do something like yeah. that, and, and and Riker being able to adapt and embrace that culture. Yeah, I maybe mean, he had to, but also being very proactive with it. As soon as he wanting wanting to seek that, because mm-hmm. no one else has ever done it before. I love that quote. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fantastic mindset, and that fits Riker too. Yeah. like the guy, except for the guy refuses to take commands of new starships, but that's okay. That's because he likes Picard. Yeah, he does. He wanted the Enterprise. If you want the prize. You're hold out for it. Yeah, that's true. That's the true. Enterprise. Yeah. But I, I really appreciate them being able to show even Jonathan Frakes charisma. Yeah. With this episode. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Sure. Cool. I got nothing, man. That's all. You got this. You got this, boo. I don't have this. Daddy, you don't need me. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Just uh, rate, too uh, soon, Nick. Rate the episode so we can get the, f- <laughs> the f- <laughs> episode over. <laughs> Is it the way I said Danny? Is it just saying Daddy in general? It is, yeah, it's all the above. Like if I said Daddy, you don't need me. Is that bad? Well, or now is, your father. Or is it, or so, is Rob, what I, would you rate? What would you rate the first episode? Three, three, mm, Daddy. I would, um, I would give it. I would give it. A, uh, yeah, three, three and a half. Are we going? Are, three and a half. Are, are we really going into ratings? And are you really giving them threes and threes and a half? Or are you just trying to move on from me? Because I get that. Both. Both. Unnatural selection. You really give it that low of a score? I three hate, and, I think I three and a half. Is, I think three and a half is generous. Really? See, I well, actually, given the right. plot holes and the science, and the yeah, and the fact the that they had genetic science. engineering to talk about and they didn't talk about it. Yeah, yeah, I actually think you're right. I think I'm about a three, Rob. I just said three. Three. Like, oh my god! Gosh, for me, god, three and a half. Sorry, Daddy, don't punish me. Three. I said three and a half. Three and a half. I got you already, Joe. A half is very important. Yeah. Joey. Mm. All right. Let's. Mm. 
This is, it, this is, is it, not Danny Man. Is it better if I bite my lower lip? Matter of honor, Rob. Yeah. Uh, I've been thinking about this for a while. I really liked it, but there are yeah. points where I'm like, eh, the captain being a little bit of a bitch. I didn't enjoy it. So I'm going to go with 5-5 five, five for now. 5-5. Five, five. Okay. I, see, I liked it a little more than that. I'm going to go 6.5. There I, are things I really liked about it, yeah. and I really wanted to rate it more, but when I, the more I thought about it, I'm like, no... I can't do it yet. I thought it was a really solid episode yeah. so far. It's probably the ep- episode I've probably enjoyed the best so far. I would say this is probably the second best episode of the season behind Elementary Deer Data. Ooh, that was a good one. I give it a 6.5. Okay. Yeah. But season two is not off to a strong start for us either. I mean, we're really strug- it looks like we're struggling with our ratings. The interesting thing to me is, for as much as I don't love these episodes, they're not... They're not so poor, I would never watch them again. Like season one? Right. There's yeah. episodes in season one where I'm like, I if I if I ever see that again, like just just let's just burn Pluto TV to the ground. Right. No. Um but like careful leave, careful leave, saying anything about Pluto TV. Leave Pluto TV like, alone. Like where no one has gone before, lonely among us. So, like those were some of the You'd code say of one honor. exaggeration and Code of Honor. Those are some of the worst. Ep- when the Welcome bow to breaks. My world. When well, the- I guess comment I said it at uh, uh, tennis today. I really want to run past you, but it's not for the air. It's for Patreon. Oh, I'll say it there on Patreon. Okay. But so, uh, like right now, is our season two. Patreon. Our, slash Rob keep and, and I have four one three. I wish I bite my tongue. And during Joe, the, uh, you're three seven five at this point. What so. was those ratings again? We were ignoring you. I know. And you're I, both four one three. Trying to keep us on track. You're four one three. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and both of you. Yeah, and you're three seven five. Oh, you're below me. Nice. Yeah, so um, Joe's given some pretty low ratings to some. Like I like when Joe's below me. Uh, with with good with, reason. with good reason. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we'll we'll see if it picks up. I mean, like the visitor, I gave it. An well, eight. actually, actually, Son it's of a bitch. It's gonna pick up because next week we got the measure of a man. It's a piece of crap. Don't let him. Don't um, let him. And the dolphin. Piece of crap. Oh, is that the is that from the guy from Rocky Four? No, it's Miami. Yeah. And Street Fighter, the movie. I think he was in Street Fighter, wasn't he? Dolph Lundgren? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I'm sure he was. I mean, wasn't he the... In Commando. He was in Commando as well. Oh, oh he was also in... Uh, he was going Commando? Universal Soldier with Jean-Claude Van Damme. <sighs> That's actually not a bad movie, though. Which, they show a lot of Jean-Claude Van Damme movies on Pluto. They do, actually. Bloodsport. Um, I was never really a Blood Van Damme guy. I was oh. never a Van Damme guy. I was Time a, Cop, though. I love Time Cop. Deep Impact was a good... Uh, that's a porno. Uh, no, uh, that mm. no. I, I was a huge Van Damme guy in the like. I was the a huge 80s. Deep Impact fan. <laughs> yeah, love the Deep Impact. I went to a, a different website to watch that movie, and it was not what I remembered. It was a bit surprise, right? Yeah. Dolph Lundgren was it on our uh, our Pornhub page? He did a lot of directed video. Dolph Lundgren in the nineties, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Actually, you know what? His first major role was Rocky IV. Yeah. And then he did he Masters dies. of the Universe as He-Man. He dies. Yep. If he dies, he dies. Red Scorpion, The Punisher. I mean, his career never, like, he just did not choose good roles because he could have done anything after Rocky IV. And I don't think Universal Soldier was too bad. I thought that was relatively successful. Universal I thought it was. But after that... Like, I don't, after that, I don't think he did it's, anything. It's kind of it. Like, he yeah. was in Johnny Mnemonic. Men of Oof. War was a movie he was in. Pentathlon. Joshua Tree. But none of those actually yeah, no became those. anything. No. So, he, and then his next major movie was... 2010 when he did the expendables and that was not because of him <laughs> you know that it's just because he was a he's a fail like a old action star and mm-hmm. it's oh, a movie and he, about old action stars. and then he reappears in creed 2 as captain ivan drango i will break you again <laughs> i will break you and put you back together Speaking of I breaking and putting us back together, we should break from this episode so we can put back together a new one next week. What do you think? Oh, wow. That was actually, that was, I like that one. It wasn't that bad. That wasn't what that bad. Think? What do you think, gentlemen? Does yeah. that work for you? Yeah. 734-494-0980. If you are in a, a listener abroad, or if you're a broad listener. Nice. If you're from Scotland or Wales. Or you're a woman. Or Irish. Or you're a man. Or you're a man. Or you're somewhere, you fall somewhere in between. If you are non-binary. Nick, what's on next week's episode? We got a guest. Jenny Johnson is going to be here. Woo woo. A great 
great painter. So join us next week when Star we Trek interview paint. Jenny Johnson. Star Trek paintings. Uh, Star Trek, but a lot of sci-fi too. So yeah. she I'm just so- she just finished up a DS9 a DS9 thing. Amazing. Amazing. Yes, exactly. So join us next week for that interview. We love you all. See you next week. Thanks for keeping up with us. Bye. See you. But I've been seen with fair up I've never been with anything less than a man So fine I've been on fire with Sally Field Gone fast with a girl named Bo But somehow they just don't end up as mine It's a death-defying life I lead I take my chances I die for a living in the movies and TV Do is watch my leading ladies kiss some of the guy while I'm bandaging my knee. I might fall from a tall building, I might roll a brand new car. Cause I'm the unknown stunt man who made Redford such a star. Spent much time in school, but I taught ladies plenty. It's true, I hire my body out for pay. Hey, hey, I've gotten burned over Cheryl Teague's blown up for Rocky Welch. But when I wind up in the hay, it's only hay. Hey, hey, I might jump an open drawbridge or Tarzan from a vine. Cause I'm the unknown stuntman that makes Eastwood look so fine.